This strange setup is the king's Indian defense. Moments before these pieces, these pawns and the queen are violently shoved into white's kingside territory. But what will happen to this bare defenseless king? Absolutely nothing. Because after days of intense digging on Lee Chess, I found three brilliant games to show you how to break all chess opening principles by forgetting about king safety, forgetting about the center, and going straight for your opponent's king. Insane. But not insane enough for me. So I decided to add a bonus trick that allows you to play this deadly opening with the white pieces as well. Now that is insane. But first, let's study the basics of the king's Indian defense. The first stage, is building this structure around your king. So you play knight f6, against pretty much any move by white, except e4. White will build a massive pawn center, and you, will continue with the plan until after e4, when you should take the time to play the move d6, in order to discourage the move e5 hitting your knight. Because after takes takes and takes, white loses his beautiful pawn center without gaining much in return. So in this position, white develops a piece instead, and you complete the first stage of the plan. This is the king's Indian setup, and this massive center by white, is nothing to worry about. That's because stage 2 of the plan, involves a surgical strike at white center with either e5 or c5. Depending on how white sets up his pieces. In the example games, I show you the positions that require you to strike with e5, and those that require you to strike with c5 in stage 2 of our plan. But rest assured, this, is the most important step of the king's Indian plan. We do this to take away white's option of just steamrolling us with his massive pawn center as soon as his king is safely castled. Because after e5, white has a decision to make. d5, which will trigger the violent final stage of our plan, or a series of captures that completely dissolve his beautiful pawn center. Because mind you, this, is not a free pawn. Taking it triggers another series of captures at the end of which, black will have annoying pressure on this b2 pawn. How will white develop his bishop? This is why after key move c5 or e5, a huge number of your opponents will play d5. This locks the central pawns together and brings us to stage 3 of our king's Indian plan. This is an attack led by pawns, supported by these minor pieces and these two major pieces. The first milestone of the attack is achieving the f5 pawn push. So moves like knight h5 knight d7 or knight e8, are all different flavors of the same plan. After castles, f5, initiates the kingside assault. The idea is to push with f4, g5 g4 chasing away the defenders of white's king, and then breaking open the king position so that the minor pieces, the rook and the queen can hunt white's king down. But how can we afford to play such risky moves? Is our king not just as vulnerable as white's? Well my friends, all lies on this simple d5 move. As soon as d5 is on the board, it means that the center is locked, and a locked center in chess, means the only avenues of attack are the flanks. But now, the angle of the interlocked wall of pawns, is such that black has more space on the king's side, and is cramped on the queen's side. But white on the other hand, has more space on the queen's side but is cramped on the king's side. So instead of fighting on the side where black has the space advantage and losing, white is advised to attack on the queen's side. And that sets up the king's Indian defense battlefield. King side attack, versus queen side attack. There are no draws in the king's Indian, and this game by the greatest chess player of all time, is a brilliant example of just how violent things can get in the king's Indian defense. d4 knight f6, c4 g6 and knight c3, is how the vast majority of your games will go. After bishop g7 and e4, Bobby Fischer plays d6, stopping e5 and on the next move, he completes the king's Indian formation. On the white pieces was Viktor Korchnoi, a Soviet chess player famously known for his terrible temper, often displayed by sweeping all the pieces off the board and losing positions. He calmly played knight f3 preparing to castle. Bobby Fischer enters stage 2 of the king's Indian plan by playing which move? Yes, e5, striking at the center. White ignores the central thrust by castling, but after knight c6 putting more pressure on the center, Korchnoi yields and plays d5. Knight goes to e7 and the white knight goes to d2, because instead of being in the way of what will likely be a violent pawn storm, this knight is better placed on a square like c4, enhancing white's queen side attack. But in this position, Bobby Fischer plays a sneaky move, c5. Delaying white's queen side progress by fixing this pawn on c4, and limiting this knight's attacking squares. He did this because pawn takes pawn on Passan, was an illegal move back then. I'm joking, it's been around since 1561, right around the time Joe Biden was born. I'm guessing the goat was confident in his ability to play with a backward d-pawn weakness, had Korchnoi captured on Passan. In the game however, a3 was played preparing before, and Fischer played knight e8, 
preparing to enter stage 3 of our plan. Before attack c5 and b6 protects, but after rook b1 adding more queenside pressure, Fischer decides to fire his own kingside attack. f5, f3 and f4. Both players are focusing on their attacking plans until Fischer plays rook f6, a brilliant move. This, is the king's Indian rook. If you can place it on such a square that it reinforces the kingside attack, but also defends your queenside weaknesses, both at the same time, you are well on your way to mastering the king's Indian defense. Takes takes and knight b3, was played by Victor Korchnoi protecting his a-pawn, and slowly bringing his forces towards black's queen side. Rook g7 by Bobby Fischer, the best position for this rook, eyeing white's king and also protecting the d6 weakness. Bishop d2 is played aiming it at black's queen side, but also a. Let's wait and see what Fischer does type move, since this sneaky c5 pawn planted by Fischer has put a wet blanket on white's attack. My inpatient 2300 elo brain, is already considering moves like bishop e1 bishop f2, sacrificing a piece for that annoying c5 pawn, and then trying to make something out of these two past pawns. But I know there is probably a grandmaster watching this video, and laughing arrogantly at that plan. It's okay buddy, I know someone who would laugh hysterically at your brilliant plans. Life is a funny thing. Anyway, Fischer plays knight f6 preparing g4, and after king h1, white is completely on the defensive. g4, is a devastating pawn break. Pawn break? Yes, pawn breaks, they open files, they open diagonals. Pawn breaks destroy defenses, and mastering them is a quick and easy way to increase your rating, your self-esteem, your testosterone levels and your sex appeal. Let me know down below if you'd be interested in an in-depth video on pawn play. You should subscribe though, don't trust the YouTube algorithm to recommend the video to you once it's out. This is a small channel you see. Anyway pawn takes and knight takes, was the beginning of the most violent attack I've seen, since my dog broke into my neighbor's chicken house. Korchnoi tries to use his rook as a defensive blockade, but rook h6 creates a new point of attack. h3 threatens this pesky knight, but does it really? Knight g6, Fischer ignores and after king g1, now the knight retreats. And for a few moves, it seems like white just might survive. But Bobby Fischer was simply reshuffling his pieces in preparation for an insane piece sacrifice. This is the best example of space advantage in chess. Black has the space to maneuver his pieces and create multiple threats on white's kingside. But white does not have the space to maneuver his pieces and respond to those threats. You mix that with a little bit of tactical intuition, and you get knight takes h3 double exclamation. Pawn takes and bishop takes check. Knight checks, bishop takes and after bishop takes threatening the queen. Korchnoi realizes that the king has no escape route to the queenside. And after the queen moves and queen h4 check, Black has the bishop, the rook, the queen, Black has this rook if he so wants. All against this trapped white king. Black is also Bobby Fischer by the way. No one special, just the greatest chess player of all time. The chess book says that in this position, Victor Korchnoi resigned. But I think we all know what actually happened. And before you judge him, you should know that the American world champion was no saint either. From moodiness to violent outbursts, it feels like to be a pro chess player back then you had to be a psychiatric patient of some sort. The following game, will surely leave you with a lot of questions, but it's very important that you watch it, before you play the king's Indian defense. The first few moves must be familiar to you by now. e4 and black plays d6 protecting his knight, but this is followed by two strange moves by white. Bishop e3 and queen d2. Why? Well, these are players who are fed up of the king's Indian and have come up with a sneaky attacking plan. The idea is to castle queenside, Use this battery in combination with the king side pawn storm to turn the tables on black. In this game however, black stubbornly went e5, sticking to the classic king's Indian plan. After d5 locking the center, and knight e8 preparing f5, white played f3 getting ready for a king side pawn storm of his own. f5, takes takes castles, and black sadly realizes that he is aiming his attack, not at black's king, but rather, at a battalion of heavy pieces and pawns. Bad idea, so he plays f4. This is not an offensive move by any means. Black is now on the defensive, and he is trying to stop white's infiltration via this diagonal. But when one diagonal closes, another opens. Bishop d3. And after rook f7 enhancing black's defense of h7, white plays g3. A pawn break, the key ingredient in all successful attacks in chess. Takes takes and now, this file is open, this diagonal is open, and these pawns, are rolling. The next few moves are black bringing more reinforcements to his kingside defense, and white adding more attackers until b5. Black throws in a jab of his own. After c5, before and knight e4, this proves to be one very sad attempt at a queenside attack. 
one of Black's defenders of h7 is about to be traded. Takes, bishop takes and now, it's three attackers versus two defenders. Something has to be done. h6 protects the pawn and hits the knight, but rook h1, is a savage response. Go ahead and take my knight white says. Takes and after queen takes, the engine says checkmate, is in nine moves. These are called intuitive sacrifices in chess. Hard to calculate all the way down to checkmate, but you can see this position, these rooks barreling down the h-file, this queen on g6, this bishop on this diagonal, and you just know, that some way somehow, something's gotta give. Let's call it, calculated faith. That's chess intuition. In fact after d takes c5, a blunder, the final moves of the game were rook h8 check, king f7 and after queen h5 check and knight g6, the only move. White had three options. Taking the queen, taking the knight and then taking the queen, or a move that puts an instant end to all the fun. But where did black go wrong, and how can we make sure this does not happen to you? Hit the subscribe button, and let's get active. The cold hard truth, is that the king's Indian defense is an insanely complex chess opening, second only to the Sicilian defense. I couldn't cover every possible variation if you gave me a whole year to do it. But the following, is how I broke 2000 LO, playing the king's Indian with both black and white pieces. The kingside pawn storm, will be the source of many beautiful attacks and wins in your chess journey, but you need to know when and when not to unleash it. For example, as soon as you see white do something weird with his pieces, like, something that may signal that he is going to castle queenside, or he wants to fire a quick kingside pawn storm of his own, break the center with c5 instead. And after d5, this right here, is called the king's Indian bishop, and he has just come alive on this diagonal. The plan of attack has changed, you want to combine this bishop's influence, with a pawn and heavy piece backed attack on the queenside. This game is an instructive example of how this queenside plan comes together. d4 knight f6, c4 g6, knight c3 bishop g7 e4 and d6, is the king's Indian defense. Bishop e3 was played by white, and after castles and queen d2, it is clear white is being sneaky with his kingside development. So black plays one more waiting move, knight d7. But after f3 preparing g4 and h4, you can never go wrong with the move c5, directing the attack at the queenside and keeping your kingside solid. You do not want to help white's attack by moving the pawns in front of your king. d5 was played, and now the target pawn break is b5. So black prepares it with the move a6. White castles and b5, initiates the attack. Do not be afraid to sacrifice a pawn to open lines towards the opponent's queenside. Because after takes 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 and queen a5, the devastating idea is to bring all heavy pieces to the A and B files, combine that firepower with the bishop's influence on this diagonal, and your pawn sacrifice, will be rewarded by the chess gods. But G4, is a move that must never be taken lightly, white was also gunning for black's head. Bishop A6 was played, the fastest way to swing this rook over to the queen's side for an attack. Takes, queen takes and H4, is on the board. White's plan is no secret, but after rook B8, black's attack is also looking quite dangerous. This, is the ideal attacking setup. Do this, regardless of where white goes with his king. Your target, is these pawns, the checkmate is a bonus. And when you do capture these two pawns, this protected past pawn will be your ticket to victory in the endgame. h5 is played, but black focuses on his own attack, and after pawn takes pawn takes, white plays b3 to keep black's knight away from this annoying c4 square. So naturally, black played, knight c4 anyway. Insane. Pawn takes knight, and after queen a3 check, white's queen is in big trouble. If you're a tournament player, this is a great time to display some alpha male body language. An arrogant sip of your water, three or four cold stares or simply, stand up, and observe the situation from a dominant elevated position. But don't go on to lose the game after doing all that. That would be it. Just don't, trust me. So king c2, and rook b2 check, was played. And after king d3, everyone watching this video, myself and my grandma, would all take the queen in a heartbeat. But black was a sadist. He played the cold-blooded knight d7 instead. Look at white's disgusting position. The king is stuck in the middle, the knight is pinned and attacked twice, the queen has issues to deal with, and if she moves, knight e5, is checkmate. For my young viewers, this is what it's like to be an adult. Rent is due, your girlfriend wants to see other people, your dog ate your neighbor's chicken, you've been writing this script for so long, but you still need to show how this opening is played with the white pieces, Anyway, the trick here my fellow friends, is knight f3, on move 1. You build your king's side structure as per stage 1 of the king's Indian plan. Let black build a massive pawn center if he so wishes, until you reach stage 2. This is where you attack the center with either c4 or e4. 
The rest of this game, is in line with the ideas I've been presenting to you all throughout this video. The board is inverted and the colors are reversed, but the ideas remain the same. It requires a little more than 7 brain cells to visualize it all, so I don't know how y'all are holding on, but feel free to watch the video again. Or better yet, subscribe, so you can come back and watch it again after a few games. But if you really want to test yourself, watch this video, and try to figure out where the King's Indian player kept going wrong. You'll also learn a thing or two about pawn breaks.